There are cities that have merged human histories with their fates. They leave an ineffaceable sketch, never to be forgotten. They comfort with their warmth and attract with their uniqueness. They arouse moments of happiness and inspire poets. Tiflis is a peculiar world where the nations of the Caucasus are united with characteristics of their manners and way of life. The city resembles a happy wedding party, where all the residents are gathered for a feast. This is how a famous old poet described Tiflis. We can only add that in Tiflis, there are gathered nations not only from the Caucasus, but also from faraway Persia. By the end of the 18th century, Tiflis was a vivid, multinational developed city. Different nations were settled and peacefully lived here, forming diverse communities. At the same time, they maintained their traditions, cultures, and religion. Being a center for various crafts, Tiflis became a destination for those who came here in search of jobs, artisans and common laborers from neighboring territories. Первое появление австрийского культуры, наверное, относится все же к 19 веке, в конце 19 века. According to a number of sources, the Assyrians came to Georgia at the end of the 19th century. Bishop Isai wrote a letter to the Georgian king Iraqli II, to ask for permission for the Ermia Assyrians to immigrate to Georgia. Isai personally gave this letter to the king. However, we still don't know if that immigration had taken place. Он был хорошо принят и так далее, и так далее. Но мы не знаем, мы не знаем, состоялось ли это переселение из Урмии в Грузии или нет. By the second half of the 19th century, Assyrians from the regions of Urmia and Salmas in Persia 
came here for seasonal work. Soon, Tiflis became a permanent residence for many seasonal workers, as it offered attractive properties and many possibilities for industrious immigrants. Over time, some of their families joined them. At the end of 1876, there were 200 Assyrians living in Tbilisi. In 1899, they had grown to 1,600. Many were adherents of Catholic, Nestorian, Protestant, and Orthodox churches. They were involved in different occupations, masons, water carriers, tuluchchi, kerosene dealers niftachi, house painters, unskilled laborers. At the end of the 19th century, a stratum of well-off Assyrians already emerged in Tbilisi, consisted of contractors, property owners, and merchants. Important houses were built by the three most successful Assyrian contractors, Babaev, Bejanov, and Bidvartha. The three friends decided to build their houses next to each other and chose a place not far from a brick processing plant that they ran. But it is said that their wives were not happy with the area, as it was an arid region. Who could imagine that today, after a whole century, Vera would become one of the richest and most expensive regions of modern Tbilisi? And who would imagine that by a twist of fate, many famous house owners would lose practically all they possessed, wealth, house, and family. One of them would die in poverty, another one would sell cigarettes on the street, while the other would simply disappear. Time can spring such surprises, but it also can bring destruction, instantaneously changing one's destiny. Today, these houses are no longer inhabited with subsequent generations of builders' families, with the exception of one family of Bijanov origin. However, the Assyrian population of Tbilisi does not consist only of descendants of Tuluchchi and seasonal workers who came to find work in the 19th century. This ancient land bears many traces of Assyrians with roots going back to the early Christian historical era. The influence of the Christian missionary who came here from the East makes a significant contribution to the Christian culture of the Georgian nation. According to Armenian sources, St. Nino the Illuminator of the Georgian nation was by birth an Assyrian from Cappadocia. She brought God's word to the Georgian land. Mirian, the king of Georgia then, believed in the homilies work of Nino and he converted to Christianity. The grave of St. Nino in the diocese of Badbe Kacheti, where she passed away.
Following Saint Nino came the ascetic movement of the 13 Assyrian preachers, also known as 13 Assyrian hermits, ascetics, an important part of the Christian history of Georgia. These 13 saintly fathers spread Christianity in Georgia, establishing monasteries and temples of the Christian faith and ideas. A number of sources testify that the emergence of the missionaries in Georgia is connected with the theological controversy between two religious movements, monophysitism and diaphysitism, begun after the Fourth Ecumenical Council for the Church held in Chalcedon in 451. Following these theological controversies, sectarian persecutions occurred in the Middle East. It is very likely that the ascetics arriving in Georgia were monophysites fleeing the prosecutions. Today, a string of structures, named after each of the 13 Assyrian saintly fathers, exists throughout Georgia. These monasteries serve as sacred places for prayers and meditation by Georgian monks and targets of pilgrimage for believers. The saintly Assyrians' fathers came here by the command of Saint Ioan, later called Zedazeni, which in Georgian means eminence. As we know, Christianity came to Georgia in the 4th century, but until the end of the 6th century, Georgians remained pagan. In the struggle against paganism, 13 Assyrian monks, under the leadership of Johann Zeta Zeni, came to Georgia. One of Zeta Zeni's disciples was David who first spread his activity in Tiflis, later here in Garaji. Among the fathers was Saint David, who together with his disciple Lucian, secluded himself from worldly concerns in his rocky, sparsely populated region. The grave of the saint is enshrined in the monastery. This area is imbued with a palpable aura of mystery and heavenly quietness. The hermit probably sought oblivion here to purify his soul, to discover truths and find the Lord in his heart. and pray are now used by monk hermits of the Georgian Orthodox Church.
The ethnic compound of Old Tbilisi was multinational. In the houses of Old Tbilisi, there lived families of different nationalities. In the yards of these houses were always heard multilingual speeches. Though people spoke various languages, they enjoyed friendly relations. That was the typical attribute of the yard of Old Tbilisi. By the 20th century, there was a small Assyrian community which was a part of a unique multinational and multicolored event known as the Yard of Old Tbilisi. Like an old thought, the Yard of Tbilisi is still and quiet. Carpets are on balconies, a water pipe right in the middle of the yard. The yards seem to be born from one another. They are large and tiny, and they are all of the same tribe and the same mode. The Assyrians in Georgia intensely discovered themselves. Here they found favorable conditions for developing fine arts and maintaining their national spirit. The national movement formed in Ermia after World War I, and tragic events in the Ottoman Empire launched in Tbilisi as well. <laughs> قد إخامي وجو تورسيا دي تأوان إن ما تسرت وجدل وا تام إخامي وا أكيد ريب الشن خميلة تام خرينا ويلا داوي تركي إي قرداي ويلا مخال كرسيان السوراديين نو أكيد السوراديين كل رقلة من تام قريبة مني بقتال وا ريبا مني بأرخاتي وبراقة بقطالي و إسامة زودة قاي أرز يال عن أرز دي وبياشا يال سور عن قور كل قطيلي لي إنا عن سور يالون من الوشي وجولد بناتي هذا خمر قيلي قد قو أرخاة أنا قردائتي وبغزائي بنات لليل يالا لي وبدرائيدا هذا بابا دي لين كما شنو عليهم خام أربع سر شنو وعن كل جسر شنو من طعم درق اللم جلد بناته ملوش. In the period between 1914 to 1918, the Assyrian nation was on the verge of extinction. A number of diseased refugees suffering from hunger lost their homes, families, and homeland. They scattered throughout the east and west. Many refugees found shelter in Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. Some of them joined their compatriots in Tbilisi. Another part was afforded shelter in cities and villages of Georgia. Thousands of Assyrian refugees from Hakkari region of southeast Turkey headed for various cities of Russia, Europe, and America by way of Tiflis. The National Assyrian Council, established in Tbilisi after the collapse of the Russian Empire, aimed at the national rebirth and restoration of Assyrians' rights in their historical homeland. Тбилиси, я думаю, что наиболее такой важный момент, который был пусковым, что ли, вот I think the organization of the Assyrian Socialist Party was the impetus of the national rebirth. Three leaders, Freydun Aturaya, Benjamin Arsanis, and Shlimun Salamas, organized this party and prepared the Assyrian Manifesto. At that time, policy that was formed by these three people was undoubtedly progressive. But the unification of the nation by the refugees who had lost their homes and families were isolated and in despair was practically impossible. 
Many of them were uneducated, did not speak the local language, and in most cases, patriarchal influences ruled their lives, the force that had formed the ideology and mentality of the Assyrian people. The cultural life of Tbilisi Assyrians re-emerged toward the beginning of the 20th century. A stratum of educated individuals sprang up that started publishing an Assyrian language newspaper called Kachva de Madencha, Start of the East. Translations and original books were published. The Assyrian schools, together with the teachers and cultural workers, played a considerable role in the maintenance of the Assyrian language and culture at a time when much of Assyrian cultural life worldwide was in disarray due to the tragic dislocations of World War I. Many leaders of the intelligentsia, however, fell victim to Stalin's repressions. The result was that the cultural educational life of Assyrians in Georgia came to its end. Only in the 1950s, certain efforts towards the restoration of the national cultural activities were made by Assyrians of Tbilisi. I think that, of course, the most famous person in this plan was Angelina Mikhailovna Grigolia, who was still in 1952. Angelina Mikhailovna is the most outstanding figure in the Assyrian cultural life. In 1952, Within the period of the Stalin regime, she founded the Assyrian National Dance Ensemble and the National Assyrian Theater. During the period of 1956 to 1957, she staged the first Assyrian performances. General Tamrazov, who was one of the managers of the Caucasus Railway at that time, provided Mikhailovna with the cultural house of his railway employees. In 1957, the Assyrian Dance Ensemble was sent to a modern festival of young students held in Moscow, where they won first prize. Angelina Mikhailovna was one of the winners of the Republican Congress and was sent to the World Festival of Young Students in 1957, which was held in Moscow. And on that World Festival, they were laureates. Rabbi David Ilian, a poet and pedagogue, expert in Assyrian folk, ethnography, and mythology, was author of fables, parables, verses, and poems. Love for his nation and homeland is the main topic of his works. His first poem, Mashalu and Kambar, was published in the newspaper Kachva de Madencha in 1934. Later, small collections of his verses have been published in Tbilisi. Today, years later, his students still remember him with great admiration. Unfortunately, Many of his wonderful works remain unfinished and unpublished. All of his works are dedicated to Assyria and its people. David Ilyan wrote brilliant poetry. His well-known poem, Sarakra, is dedicated to King Manu. Every time I saw him, he was sitting at his corner and writing. He designed all of his books this way. He made his books by hand. At the end of some of his poems, he introduced a dictionary for words that people were not familiar with. By the end of the 19th century, there were two Assyrian settlements in Georgia. The Zvelikanda, as it is called today, is inhabited with 350 Assyrian families.
Kristina Chugianova, the oldest resident of the village, was born in 1916 in Kanda. At the beginning of the 20th century, Kanda was divided in two parts, as Kristina Chugianova was told by her mother. Each of those parts had its separate life. The Assyrian population didn't own land plots at that time, but over time each family was given a land area where their houses were built. The immigrants usually settled in those places that reminded them of their homes or at least where there was water, the most important element of life. This spring was once found by Assyrian immigrants. It is a memorable site for the villagers and has recently been renovated by Moscow entrepreneurs born in Kanda. Wherever people are and wherever their home is, they make a special corner to praise the Lord. To replace some little-known ruins, Assyrians erected a church named after Zayt Zayai. These Assyrian refugees once had a church called Mar Zayai in their homeland. Marezi, Saint Zayai's name day, is celebrated in this church each year on July 14. When it is celebrated at similarly named Assyrian churches throughout the diaspora. The village of Kanda has a children's dance ensemble, Ashur, directed by choreographer Ludmila Bitkash.
The dance group is in its second year. Ludmila also directs the women's dance group Nineveh in Tbilisi. Al fresco is an Italian word meaning fresh. It is a method of wall painting in which pure powder pigments, mixed only with water, are applied to a wet freshly laid lime plaster surface. Fresco was used in ancient Mesopotamia, but it has been chiefly used in the works of the greatest masters of the Italian Renaissance as well, as the Mexican artists of the 20th century. This valley Kanda has provided many talented fresco masters. Unfortunately, at the current pace of life and interior design style, this brilliant art method has lost its popularity. Every room of Grigori Bit Atanus's house is adorned by the painter himself. Though he is over 70, he still enjoys following his favorite artistic activity. It is a pity that his family members do not appreciate his craft. Najaru itu najar ti nama mara permilah doktor. Ani stalyar nani lah, stalyar separi walad dia. Terusnya ni pelakli ana labi dia, pelakli walad dia. Sana cumi li itu wat kat teknikum kali istana kan dia. Beli sana kata. Her lab bakur men awahat dia, men babi jimi lembukra. Murali sabutiati tama, usurili bukra ya. Perkali pelakli bidam lecul kay. Kasa nafsi tak ham nafsi telilbiya. The compact dwellings of the Assyrians in the village of Dizvelikanda are the pledge of the nation's legacy. In villages, it is easier to preserve the language, national identity, and traditions rather than in modern cities. In Dizvelikanda, the native language is spoken by almost everyone, even by children. <laughs> Amlet Burasha Bidori Bishini Yalak Burbuz Mahdeni Atwimi Ainati Dumi Moliena Nini The Church of Mar Abdishu, which is at the village cemetery, is named after a saint of the Assyrian Church of the East. The age-old gravestones are well preserved here. They bear witness to the exceptional care bestowed by families on graves and the distinctiveness of Assyrian burial rituals.
the Kuki Cemetery of Tbilisi enshrines century-old gravestones where, together with Assyrians, lie Russians and Armenians. A magnificent statue of the Virgin Mary used to stand here. It was carved in the workshop of the outstanding Italian sculptor, Andreoletti of St. Petersburg Academy of Arts in the first half of the 20th century, and commissioned by Usta Alaverdi Badalov for his young daughter's grave. Traditions are strictly observed in another Assyrian village of Gardabani. As long as can be remembered, the people of Gardabani celebrate Maora's Day, Sharda Maora. This name day festival dedicated to Saint Abraham occurs on the 100th day after Easter. This festival is not included in the annual calendar of the Assyrian Church of the East. To the villagers, great surprise, this year the weather is chilly and rainy. They do not remember such cloudy weather on this holiday in July, when it is usually unbearably hot in Gardabani. These lambs are to be sacrificed on Mar Ora's day. The sacrificed meat will be shared with families in Gardabani. There are also Muslims in the village. They too will take an active part in the festival. During the Soviet communist era, this small church was nearly closed several times but the strong belief and the unshakable willpower of the locals did not let the government eliminate this place of God. Recently, the chapel has been renovated. The preparations for Dukhrana, sacrificial offering, take place in the churchyard. In Gardabani, called Karayas before, Assyrians settled at the end of the 19th century. At the beginning of the 20th century, other Assyrians moved here from various Assyrian communities in eastern Armenia. Today, there are 80 Assyrian families in this village. This old building used to be a school where Assyrians studied. With the efforts of the Elbrus Kashkun, the building was given to the local organization Bet Nachrein.
Not far from Karayas is situated the tiny village of Botan, as it's called by the locals. The Assyrians transplanted here from the Azeri city of Kanlar, where they had taken refuge. <laughs> They are known as Bote, Botanas, because they originate from the Botan region of Van province in the Ottoman Empire. These Assyrians are distinguished from their co-villagers by their customs and dialect. Today, there are 2,500 Assyrians living in Tbilisi and its districts. The Kuki district is inhabited by a large number of Assyrians. In 
recent years, many of them have sold their houses and moved to Russia because of the hard economic situation in Georgia. Assyrians live peacefully in Kuki together with Armenians and Kurds. In their free time, more common now than before, they gather for a game of Nardi when they also engage in discussions of the latest world events. There are no Assyrian churches preserved in Tbilisi. They were destroyed by the Soviet government in 1938. Many Assyrian families attended the Catholic Church of St. Peter and Paul. Kasha Estapanus used to serve his Assyrian flock here within the period of 1940 to 1950. Today, this church is respected by believers and priests of various confessions. They have gathered for a service in the memory of parish Christian Assyrians in Iraq. The women's choir of the Catholic Assyrian community is performing in the service. But the Assyrian flock soon will have its own church, with the support of Reverend Binyamin, a new Assyrian Catholic church to be named for Mar Shimun Bar Sabai is being erected in Tbilisi. The community develops through the Assyrian National Congress of Georgia, established in 1992 when the Independent Republic of Georgia emerged after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Branches of organization operate in every Assyrian populated village of Georgia and in the city of Kutaisi in western Georgia. The newspaper of Utah, Concordance, began publication to cover Assyrian community events. Sports teams of the Assyrian National Congress prepare for the All-Assyrian Summer Competition, Tammuz, held each year in Urmia, Iran. Today, a number of vital questions concerning community life are being discussed at the ANC Executive Meeting. Sports hold an important place in community life. Many Assyrian athletes have taken part at various international competitions and achieved good results. Today, some of them have entered sports sphere as trainers. Elizaveta Azizova started her career as a basketball player in the 50s when she played in the Georgian national team.
later she engaged in training work at. Elisabetta is an honor trainer and referee. When I was small, I went to the Kirov Park and saw children playing basketball. I didn't know what the game was called. I went up to the coach and asked him if I could go with them. He said I could. The next day, I went to Lev Dukonsky, the coach, who took me on the team. I was 18 or 19 then. At that time, people began playing sports late. Over the past 15 years, hundreds of Assyrians have left Georgia, predominantly for the Russian Federation. Many entrepreneurs, migrants from Georgia, establish businesses and make investments in their homeland. Recently, a social organization known as the Orthodox Community of Georgian Assyrians has been registered. Some Assyrians aim at advancing the cultural national life in native settlements by creating children's groups. They also tend to hold classes in the nearest future of their mother tongue in village schools. It seems that globalization troubled times in the Middle East and in Georgia, and the continual exodus of Assyrian people from their historic habitation may intensify the assimilation of this ancient people. But one thing is encouraging. It's the optimistic spirit of Assyrians, their hope that their people will not disappear, that the language and traditions of their forefathers will not pass away. The community lives its everyday life, despite the unstable situation and increasing unemployment in Georgia. Many marry only within their community in the hope of creating a national family, for the preservation of Assyrian ethnicity, and for maintaining that thin but remarkably powerful string that ties them to their long-suffering biblical nation.